Bon dia and welcome to the ninth lesson of Catalan from scratch in the beginner level. In this video we will see the prepositions in Catalan and word of advice, prepositions have many different meanings so everything that I'm going to explain in this video is very generic and vague. I will try to be as precise as possible but keep in mind there are a lot of exceptions, there are a lot of different cases and examples in which you can use one or another. So every translation that I give is going to be just an example of their most common use mostly. So let's start with the content of the video. There are no solutions from the previous one because it was a video just about listening, right? So what is a preposition? It is an invariable grammar element that is followed by an article or a noun. By, by invariable, I mean that they do not depend on gender, number or the tense of the verb. So they will always have the same form. You do not have to change them depending on those factors. So that is at least a positive sight. So this is a list of the most simple common prepositions in Catalan. Of course there are more, but they are usually compositions of these that you see. So these are again their most common translations, but as you can see some of them have different ones because they are very broad, but that is the problem with prepositions. Sometimes you just have to learn them by heart. But in this case, in this video, we will only see in depth the first five or six because I feel like these are the most common ones and it is in the end a beginner video and you are still uh, le learners, amateurs in this language. So I feel like it would be too much to explain every single one of these prepositions. So let's start with the preposition a, which is, as you saw, the one that has probably the biggest amount of translations. A is always used in dynamic situations in which you want to explain that you're going from a point A to a point B. So you use it along movement verbs. For example, vull anar a Italia. I want to go to Italy. Anna to go is a verb that implies a movement so you're going from a point A to a point B and you use a preposition a. Uh, you can use the same example with driving somewhere or cycling and so on. However you can also use the preposition a in static situations for example, when you specify a physical and known location. Som a casa d'en Pau. We are at Pau's house. This house is a physical location. It's a, uh, it's a specific one, so you use a. However, in static situations, sometimes it is interchangeable with the preposition an, and there is a lot of confusion with this, uh, just like there's a confusion with in or on in English. But the preposition un is always used in st static situations, never with dynamic situations. But it is not interchangeable with cases in which you are introducing concepts or placing yourself in abstract situations or, or a specific context and not physical places. For example, en tot cas, Reste sentit. In any case, nothing makes sense. You are just introducing a context, so you use the preposition an. Ens trobem en una situació complicada. We find ourselves in a complicated situation. Literally. So, a complicated situation is, is somewhere you are in, but it's not a, a specific and, and physical place. It is an abstract concept, so you use a preposition an. Using the preposition a would be wrong in this case. 
So next up, preposition the. The marks starting points, causes for something or the origin of something. For example, being de la botiga, I come from the shop. This is the starting point, the special starting point from which you come from. So you use the. Now time-wise, començaré a estudiar de matinada. I will start studying in the early morning. This is also a starting point, but this is a time starting point. You are setting the origin or your starting point in the early morning, but you also use the. Now, tremolo de por, I shake with fear. So this is the cause for which you are shaking. You also use the in these cases. You could change the word fear with another feeling and it would still be right to use the. For example, I shake with nervousness would be tramolu da nervis. In other grammatical cases, uh, you can also translate it to off or use it for possession. But again, this is a generic explanation. So it doesn't mean that you always apply this. La taula is da fusta. The table is made of wood. You use the when you want to describe the material material with which something is made of. Is la joguina del gat. It is the toy of the cat. Is la joguina del gat. Del is a union of the words the and al. So literally it is the toy of the cat. This is a possession example. Next, this is another example with which you can translate it to off. Soc a davant de l'escola. I am in front of the school. Next, preposition amp. And this is probably the easiest one to translate from English because I would say in more than 95% of the cases you translate it to with. Mengem bolets amb puré de patates. We eat mushrooms with mashed potatoes. Vaig a la muntanya amb el meu germà. I go to the mountain with my brother. Ho faré amb o sense tu. I will do it with or without you. Sense is another preposition which means without. Ho faré amb o sense tu. Vols un cafè amb llet? Do you want a coffee with milk? A coffee with milk or café amb llet is a latte, but this is how we say it in English. But in Catalan, you literally say a coffee with milk. Vols un café amb llet? And lastly, the prepositions per and para. And I am, I am mixing this ones, uh, these two, because there's a lot of confusion with their use. But I would say the most common one is per. So you use per to introduce the use of something, the motive uh, for which you are doing something, or who is receiving an action. So the indirect object of a sentence. So for example, he comprat un pastís per tu. I have bought a cake for you. So jo he comprat, I have bought, I am the subject, un pastís. A cake, that is the direct object of the sentence, per tu, for you. So you are the indirect object of the sentence. You are the receiver of everything that's happening. So in this case, for indicating receivers, you use per. El ganivet serveix per tallar el menjar. The knife is used for cutting food. So, for describing uses, you also use per. Now, to explain the motive for something, I raise my hand to speak. I raise my hand in order to speak. So, if you can change it to in order to, then you can probably say per. So, the preposition per a is usually used for setting time limits. Like I said, it probably has more very specific meanings, but generally 
uh, this always applies. So, he d'acabar la paparassa per a dilluns. I need to be done with the paperwork by Monday. So, Monday is a time limit. So, you use para to specify this time limit. Ella vol pintar la casa per a l'any vinent. She wants to paint the house by next year. Same thing. Next year is a time limit and you specify this time limit with para. So these are some examples. Uh, each sentence has a different uh, highlighted preposition. Fa tres anys que visc amb en Carles. I have been living with Carles for three years. I have been living alongside Carles for three years. This is an, an, an easy translation. You just say am. Vaig a Andorra. Vols res? I am going to Andorra. Do you want anything? So I am going to a point A, where I am now, to a point B, Andorra. There is a movement, it's a dynamic situation, so you use the preposition a. Vaig a Andorra. Vols res? No deixo d'estudiar en cap moment. I don't stop studying at any, any moment. So, cap moment, any moment, it is a con concept, it is something abstract. So, I use the preposition en. No deixo d'estudiar en cap moment. Som al concert de jazz. We are at the jazz concert. The jazz concert is a physical and specific place. So, you use the preposition a. Even though you write al because it is a union between a and al. But the preposition a is included in there. Preparem una festa per la Laia. We prepare a party for Laia. Preparem una festa per la Laia. So this is um, for indicating that Laia is the receiver of something. Preparem, we prepare, we are the subject. Una festa, a party, that is the direct object of the sentence. Per la Laia, for Laia. So Laia is the receiver of everything that is happening. Laia is the indirect object. And per is a preposition that indicates that. Per parlar una llengua, primer has d'escoltar-la. To speak a language, first you need to listen to it. So, like I said, if you can say in order to, then you can use per. In order to speak a language, first you need to listen to it. Per parlar una llengua, primer has d'escoltar-la. So, and that was it. Um, I know the prepositions can be a bit tedious. I agree with you if that is what you think. But it is also essential to construct sentences and to express better. It takes a lot of time to master them, if you get to master them. But uh, eventually you will learn them by heart and it is very satisfying with that when that happens so with that said thank you so much uh, that was the video if you liked it uh, press the like button uh, if you're not subscribed do so please and if you know anyone that might be interested in learning Catalan please send that person this video and yeah that's it thank you so much and adeus y'all